Hey guys, Anthony for Before Diesel. We're just doing a hopefully a quick video because we've talked about this sort of stuff before. There's people still asking now. I'm going to say it now. If you follow the information and watch all the videos till the end, you're going to know the answers. You don't have to wonder anymore. You don't have to make decisions being, you know, misinformed and make the wrong decisions buying the wrong parts and modifications. Now, I'm not selling you stuff that you do or don't need, right? It's just, you know, the only thing we're going to sell is stuff that, you know, you kind of can't get elsewhere and, you know, to make sure you get the right parts or we're going to direct you to the, you know, for example, we could have a battery shop and we could sell you batteries, but we send you to every battery because they're the battery experts. They've got all the batteries and so it's, it's not, you know, it doesn't make any difference whether you buy a battery there or not or what battery you buy. I just share our experiences, you know, working in the motor vehicle industry, working on Prados, working on full drives and using them. We get quite a lot of experience from doing so. So I just try and use those experience and process it really well and then share it with you. So this one's talking about fuel filters, okay? Just quickly, and I say quickly, you know, it's never quick, but hopefully quicker than the last one. If you want the longer versions, go on our channel and search fuel filters, do I need a fuel filter, anything about fuel filters. There'll be at least half a dozen videos on fuel filters showing you how to change them, when to change them, why to change them, what the part numbers are, what we use and why. All the information goes with it, right? So here we go. Here's a fuel filter under the bonnet of a Toyota Prado. Now, the Toyota Prados with the dual fuel tank, they've got two fuel filters, right? So the fuel's constantly flowing. Okay, so the one at the back, it's kind of like a bit of a pre-filter. It doesn't mean every bit of fuel goes through that one, but it cleans the fuel up a lot before it gets to the front. So it's a bit of a bonus, okay? Because um, you've got a constant flow in a diesel system, okay? Let's not get too much into that. That filter's due every 20,000 Ks, the one at the back that goes above the tail shaft near the fuel tanks. That's the one that a lot of people, a lot of workshops don't even know about. And when they change the filter every 20,000, they're doing this one, and they haven't even changed the other one that happens a lot okay so this is to help everybody you know i understand that you know lots of different cars this one that one and that's the fuel filter you saw that's the, th the one you thought they meant no it's not that one some of the vehicles have this scheduled at every forty thousand. some don't have a schedule at all i recommend changing this every forty thousand. now this is to really answer do you need an extra fuel filter so let's think let's just think it through trying to use a bit of common sense that's uncommon so we'll call it uncommon sense right so you've got a rear filter there, rear fuel filter doing a bit of cleaning. This one is doing a bit of cleaning. Toyota spent millions of dollars, been doing it for years, engineering vehicles and stuff like that. Um, and that's what they installed to the vehicle. So that should be right, shouldn't it? What do you think, mate? Do you think that should be right? If Toyota's done it, they've probably got it right? Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense to you? Mm -hmm. Makes sense to me. Okay, so our experience here right leads us to believe that they've made the right decision because our understanding is this is around about a six and a half micron you know like circa you know what do you call it what's the word um nominal six and a half nominal so it could be sort of like five to eight kind of thereabouts right so let's call it a five micron if you want call it whatever you want right but it's what it is and what we believe the one at the back of the vehicle is the same and it's the same on the hiluxes even though they're different same same different same Okay, more or less, ish. And they'll come up with a size that works, okay? Now, if you put a finer filter, it can cause some issues. Otherwise, they would put a finer filter, right? And if you put a more coarse filter, it may cause some issues. Otherwise, maybe they'd do that too. Now, if you add an extra filter, these are some of the downsides. Obviously, it costs you money. Do you want to spend money if it's a waste of money you don't need to? No. Exactly. Um, now... You've got a quality engineered vehicle with nice solid brackets and stuff. When you get these, some of these aftermarket brackets, they're just a bit dodgy, you know. You start hanging twice as much weight with more leverage because it's out here off the same bracket the body of the car. It can crack the body of the paintwork. So make sure if you're going to do it, you've definitely got a good bracket. Um, sorry about that, guys. Little interruption there. You get that. Someone arrived at the Prada Hospital. Um, so... You've, you've got the same bracket and all that extra weight, so it can tear get the guard to pieces. Make sure you've got the right brackets the first thing, okay? And some of the places we've seen the hoses mounted, crazy. So there's some of the downfalls, wrong hoses, then hose clamps instead of these nice automatic self-tensioning clamps that never have any leaks or problems or deterioration. You start introducing 
other quality products. I won't say high or low quality. Other quality products, not the same quality as these. Other quality, other setups, old style hose clamps, you know. Where, do we see those anywhere here? Nowhere. Nowhere. None of those clamps anywhere, right? Quality, right? So don't wreck the quality. This is the first point I'd like to make. One of the biggest points I'd like to make before it's too late is we have seen vehicles. Okay, so we sell a lot of injectors. We get a lot of injectors back. We do a free contamination check, right? You know what? Not many vehicles have water contamination. Just give me one sec. I'm going to silence that before it rings and interrupts. Um, we don't see water contamination. It's very rare, okay? But you know how many times it's we've seen it? That's water in injectors. And the car's got three fuel filters, right? So there's got an extra... So, young fellow, would it make sense to you if the car's already got... I've got a question for you, right? Do you mind if I ask you a question? Is that cool? Okay. The car's already got two fuel filters, right? So if we add another one, so there's three, all right? And then when we change the injectors and we pull them apart and we see they've had water in there, so you know there's water got to the injectors, what does that tell you? That tells you that the water goes straight through the fuel filters, right? Otherwise it yeah. couldn't have got to the injectors. Makes sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if that happens with three fuel filters, well, what was the point of having it there? Right? Yeah. Waste of money, yeah? Waste of time. Didn't do anything. Now, I'm not saying that it's not going to take some more things out of the fuel, but what do you do? Do you make it, you know, look, there's people who've got a, okay, so the, the servo's got a 30 micron pump on the pump, right? That's what's meant to happen. Information from people that build and take down servos, right? That's what they've told me. Quality servos, they've got a 30 micron there, right? So it's getting pre-filtered there. That's, that's why the pump's slow sometimes, because the filters, the pump's starting to block up, right? Now, if it's really fast and never blocks up and you're at an independently owned server, maybe they've just taken the filters off, okay? I'm just putting ideas out there, maybe, you know? I'm not saying what they do or don't do. I'm sure nobody would do that, you know what I mean? Wink, wink. Now, so, if you've got extra fuel filters and it's getting through, well, that's not working, waste of time. So, and then on the other side of the scale, so we've seen that and heard of it from people that have contacted us with crack pistons that have had injectors tested and the injectors are bad and they've had water through them as low as 50,000 kilometres up in the top northern parts of Australia. Right? Could be probably some bad fuel, some water. But the point is, he got the car new, he drove it out and he went and put that extra filter on, two micron filter, which at that point hadn't caused any problems. But it happens that this is, we'll get to that. We've mentioned it already anyway. So I'm gonna, I said I'm gonna try and keep this short, but look, there's so much information, right? So. There you've got someone from factory, drove it home, put the fuel filter on two micron, and at 50,000 k's he's got a crack piston. But the injectors were flogged and the system was full of water, okay? It got through the, the filters. So the prevention isn't working, okay? So is that what you wanted to prevent? Water getting to your injectors, wrecking injectors and fuel system and then damaging your engine? Because it didn't work, okay? And there's other times it didn't work as well, okay? Then we've got people with the standard fuel system set up, like, Let's just say, you know, some of the systems have got one fuel filter, not two. And they change this fuel filter regularly and they make sure it's not covered in dust, dirt and mud and there's not dirt going in that end of that clean hose, you know what I mean? Whatever, while they're changing it. Because what's the point of having a filter here if you do a dirty job and you let some... If you take the car into someone and it's all dirty and dusty and they've got to change your fuel filter, what's the chance a bit of dust and dirt from there is going to get in the hose? Well, there's a chance, okay? So... Take the vehicles in clean, not just for us. You should probably just look after it, keep it clean for everyone. And I understand you're probably a bit nervous about cleaning it. That's why you can go and wash out how to wash an engine video. Now, that demonstration is obviously on a Prado only, and every vehicle varies. And if it's a quality make and model, you should be able to give it a clean up in certain areas. You don't have to use a lot of pressure really close, but this video, again, not about that, getting off topic. Um, so we've seen all the extra fuel filters with water get through to the injectors and engine failures and that. But we've seen even more vehicles, examples, people that take our advice or, or their own advice, whatever it is, the most vehicles don't have the extra fuel filters, okay? And most of them have done hundreds of thousands of kilometers without a problem and we see the injector readings, we see the injectors, they're no worse than any other, you know, the ones with the extra fuel filter aren't any better, right? So my point at the start was, I'm, see, I don't care if you buy a fuel filter or not. If you want to spend your money and buy a fuel filter, yeah, it's going to pick up some, it is going to filter the fuel and it's going to pick up some stuff there. That's good. But my question to you is how much over what period of time, it's such a small amount, was it really going to make any difference? Okay. So fuel pressure, 
does erode some fuel components away, right? There's a lot of pressure there going on. By putting a filter doesn't change the pressure, okay? Um, and the other wear part is the metal parts rubbing on each other. That's why the DLC coating is really good. But of course, that can, even though it's harder and it's got less, fr less friction, it can still wear through anyway. So, but it's heaps better than just the standard, you know, piece of mold, steel, whatever the case, whatever it is. Metal, you know, metal wear, just rubbing together, like the engine, the bore and the rings, you know, rubbing together, you need oil lubrication. So it only lasts so long. That's what happens with injectors, okay? It's not really that much, I'm not saying some debris in the fuel, but there's such a small amount spread over such a long period of time, that sort of thing makes little difference. If you've got good quality filtration, you're changing it regularly, you're in business. So in my opinion, the answer to, can you please answer, sir, from that information, would you add an extra fuel filter to your vehicle? Do you need it? No. Okay. So, waste of money? Yep. So do you remember what some of the downsides were? Could make it unreliable from that bracket cracking the vehicle, whether it's this side or the other well, side. The water could go um, into the injector. Yeah, the water goes through anyway, that's right. It doesn't really... Look, you know, on the test board, you know, you can go to the full drive show and they've got, you know, they're selling fuel filters. So they've got the board there and it shows you how it works with the water. That's awesome. And it's sitting still. Shake the car up on the corrugations and see what happens then, okay? That's my example. I don't care if you buy a fuel filter or not, what brand or not. I'll just give the information and the answers. We don't run extra fuel filters on our car. Happy days. All right, guys. Um, as I said, remember, the people that have, have the problems also. If two filters didn't stop it, either does three. Maybe you should try four or five. Hey, man, what do you reckon? We put five fuel filters on the car. See if that... No, nah, not Waste in his head. Money. Waste of money. Waste time. Just leave it alone. Try to know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Look, that's what we think. So I'm not going to argue the point. I understand that the extra fuel filter, it may help in some circumstances. I'll give you one little tip if you've made it to the end. If you're going to set up, there's different opinions. There's lots of different, and there's pros and cons of both. But if you're going to set up an extra fuel filter under the bonnet, in my opinion, have your last aftermarket fuel filter after this, between this and the engine, okay? So that way, you're making use of the... Uh, the water because it's got a water set, a float it's float switch in the bottom here So your lights gonna come on when you've got water and then the fuels going to the next filter So hopefully if the light comes on then the fuel hasn't got through the other filter But I've told you it comes through anyway. It doesn't work out But if you're gonna do it if I was forced to put a fuel filter in this vehicle an extra fuel filter So if somebody's out there and they you know want to sponsor a video and supply a fuel filter if you've got this awesome bracket and awesome hoses and awesome clamps and you convince me that, you know what, mate, we'll do it, we'll do an install video, we'll do a review on it, we'll do all that, right? But mm, not required, right? But my point is make sure it's solid, make sure the hoses are right. You know, I've gone on long enough, guys. You get the picture. We've said it before in other videos. If you've watched till the end, thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up if you got that information, you got something out of that. I hope it's helped you make the right decision. And don't forget to subscribe and turn the bell on so that you don't miss the notification for the next important bit of information. Thanks for watching, guys. See ya.